You're listening to The Governor's Podcast, which is hosted by school governors, for school governors, and for all involved in or impacted by education governance. On The Governor's Podcast, we have open, honest, and transparent discussions about governance in the UK education sector, sharing and providing insights into the realities of entering the boardroom, sitting around the governing board table, and leaning in. Okay, let's get into today's topic. So being the last episode of the season, because Mm -hmm. it's also the final part of the academic year, uh, Mm -hmm. 21-22, is there anything that you would like to speak on to wrap up this season? Is there anything like just brewing or just sitting on your chest that you feel like our listeners need to hear? Oh, Oh. So you are feeling my energy. Oh, yeah, I, I heard it too. <laughs> well, we had we we had a different topic, but that I'm parking because for those of you who um, are listening to this afterwards, it is the middle of July. Mm-hmm. The sun is shining. We've got mm-hmm. two weeks to go mm-hmm. um, before the end of term in most schools, I, th- I, I think, across the country. Mm-hmm. And I was on a webinar recently, mm-hmm. an external webinar. I will not name the provider. Okay. But um, it was a webinar about exclusions, because if you're not aware yet, we are currently waiting for updated guidance guidance from the DfE okay. on, ex- on exclusions. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I won't get into the whys and wherefores, but we're waiting for updated um, information. But this webinar was um, an hour long and it was almost talking about what the likely updates are going to be. Okay. So I, ima- so I imagine, I couldn't see any of the audience. It wasn't on Zoom. It was on a webinar platform where you don't even, there was no chat or anything. They switched okay. off all the chat. You couldn't see how many people online or any of that. All you could do was see the presentation, the presenters, and you could ask a question. And there was a box to ask a question. And so um, I couldn't see who else was online because usually, you know, you recognize names and things like that. Anyway, mm-hmm. I would imagine given the topic that most of the attendees or at least a good percentage of the attendees would have been either clerks or I was there wearing my head of governance hat or other governance professionals okay yes there may it may have been targeted at governors and it may have been there may have been some governors on there you know I'm a governor as well Mm -hmm. but I would I would you know, almost guaranteed that the majority of the audience were clerks and governance professionals. Okay. So, so why during the entire presentation? Oh, here we about, go. About what to do um, in terms of exclusions, what schools can and cannot do, and the panel and what governors need to do. Why were clerks? and governance professionals excluded from the exclusion webinar as in not mentioned not referenced not, not considered not referenced that no there was no speak to your clerk. wow there was no um you know your clerks are the ones who need to um drive this your clerks are the ones who need to communicate with the panel organized about nothing clerks, clerks coordinate everything i say this they never they as never a governor, mentioned it like I as a governor who has had experience at on exclusion panels um in the past like the clerk is the one that first tries to identify who can be on that panel and then coordinate with the with the parents or their representative and then figure out with the school who's speaking and and coordinating dates because I know there's like a tight turnaround there's like you've got like 15 days or something something like that I only know that from the clerks who have coordinated things it's not governors at your next LGB volunteer to sit on the panel no no you cannot have a panel really any kind of panel without it being clerked you may be able to have a meeting 
that can be minuted by somebody else short notice or, mm-hmm. but but a proper panel that follows procedure yes and legislation yes has to be clerked yes yes and they didn't mention it so I typed a question Oh dear. In, the, in, in the non-chat <laughs> in the non-chat I was so no, I was really I was part offended yeah part upset mm-hmm. and part flabbergasted I think was it because... was it training or was it just the case of here's some information what was the format in the it was, delivery it, it was a webinar so yeah. it was it wasn't it wasn't I don't think it was pre-recorded okay um but that's immaterial because whether it was pre-recorded or live um it someone should be there because, for questions because at the end of the day the the the, the slides were there yeah but there was a slide about the role of the of the head teacher there was slides yeah. about the role of the governors there was no slide about the role of the clerk who literally ties all those Everything. areas together so i typed in the in the non-chat chat in the, in the, in the, the non-chat chat like you know why have you not mentioned the role of the clerk and the governance professional in in exclusions please tell me the question was answered please the the presenter did not acknowledge my question what they said was oh yeah and don't forget that your clerks all of this is relevant to your clerks as well don't forget almost like an afterthought stop it yeah and and it was only after I put that so the if I hadn't um put that comment in the in the non-chat chat there was no guarantee that they would mention no, the clock at all. We, we wouldn't have been mentioned. And the reason why I'm laboring this point is because it's 2022. Yeah. I've been talking about this f- literally for years. Yeah. For years. Mm-hmm. Clarks are... People. We, we are people. You are people. See us. People with a place. People Absolutely. with a seat. Yeah. Without, I, I was um, speaking to a, a chair of governors recently um, who I was delivering training for the, for the trust that I am head of governance for. And um, we were talking about um, Ofsted visits and challenge and scrutiny and governor visits. Mm-hmm. And we were particularly talking about minutes and how your minutes need to reflect the challenge and scrutiny and if Mm -hmm. you don't say it it can't be minuted and if it's not minuted it can't be evidence Mm -hmm. and the chair said you know it would be great but we haven't got a clerk so uh, our minutes are just not up to and so you know so if you don't have a clerk everything everything falls falls down down. (laughs) literally yeah how can you not be seen and and at this time of the year what I'm what I'm seeing more we've got a we've got a Facebook group um, for us clerks mm-hmm. um, so if you're a clerk listening to this and you're not on the Facebook group then do check it out it's called Clerks to Governors UK um, and it's our safe space where we can stand on our soapboxes yeah and you'll have rant. other people who will understand yeah. where you're coming from yeah we can we can rant um, uh, we, that's not all we do but we can we can yeah. let off steam and be yeah. amongst people who value us yeah and the at this time of the year July where the final meetings of the year are taking place there are so many clerks in that group who are saying I sat there and listened to the chair and the head thank everybody everybody for their hard work over the year the governors for volunteering yeah, and giving so up their true. time the yeah. um the head the senior leaders and please pass on our thanks to the staff themselves and everybody yeah. gets thanks is- ex- except the clerk yeah and the clerk is there minuting the thank you thanks yeah. yeah to everyone but and them not, and not being mentioned I'm, i mean you know i have to admit um, I've I've never been in that position mm-hmm. where where I haven't been thanked. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't expect cards and flowers and all that. No, no just, just a little acknowledgement. <laughs> just acknowledge us. Yeah. yeah, acknowledge the fact that we've you know we've worked. Again, I was talking to um, to some governors because I've been doing a lot of governor training recently, mm-hmm. and I was talking to some governors, and they were saying, you know, it would be great if we got our minutes in in a in a f- couple of days at the moment they're taking about a week and I, what? Oh, yeah, what? What? I, I burst out laughing 
I burst out laughing because the perception is that the clerk, that's all they do. I don't know, 48 that, hours. That, yeah, that, but the perception is that that is all the clerk does in terms of there's no, you know, they don't. A have a life. Oh, B, now stop they it. don't they don't have any other responsibilities. Um, and C that you know, um, if the meeting was on Thursday, they're expecting the minutes on a Monday or something like that. I says, okay, can I stop you there? And There's a I weekend. Just, can I just can I just shift from trainer to clerk in this moment and respond to you? Please know for a fact that um the length of your meeting, it takes twice as long to produce a good set of minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, for for um, an, an average timeline, the shock on their faces was unbelievable. So if look at all to... the discussions that you're having, and to capture right. the essence of that, make sure there's challenge. Make... Because these right. become the record that are used for Ofsted or for any right. kind of tracking of how a school's moving forward to evaluate the senior leadership team and the strategic body. Like they're not just written notes about what was chit chatted about. This is, no, they have no, to be we've re- got, we've got to, they've got to be structured properly. Stop they've got to make it. sense, all of that. So I said, yes, a two hour meeting is at least four hours to transcribe and a set of minutes. So if your meeting is going on for three hours, then that's six hours, four hours, then that's eight hours, you know, and that's just, that's just standard, um, you know, and, and I said, and don't forget that your clerk is probably clerking Most other one. schools. Yeah. I says at my height, I was clerking eight schools and I remember hitting a, I can't remember whether it was Easter holiday or half term. Oh, when you had like 13 term. or something. I had 13 sets of minutes. I remember you telling to, me that. To do. And it was the scariest thing, not because I couldn't do it, but the time scale. Yeah. And I, I remember sitting down and emailing all of my heads mm-hmm. and my chairs and mm-hmm. saying to them, um, four of them were in the same trust. So, so they, they knew. And if you're work, if you're a clerk working in, in a trust, in a mat, mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. clerking more than one of the, the, the schools in that mat, mm-hmm. then their meetings tend to happen simultaneously at the same, yeah, around around the same, same time. time. Mm-hmm. So in one, in one week, you can be in three different schools at yeah. three separate meetings, all LGB yeah. meetings, yeah. and all like two to three to four hours long. Yeah. And you've and you and all of them have got the same time scale to turn minutes around. Because they're That's working important. towards the, the trust board kind of meetings right. and everything. Yeah. Right. So so bear that in mind. Many clerks are, I mean, I've I've typed minutes right into the night. Yeah. Um, got up at four o'clock in the morning to, mm-hmm. to type mi- meetings, to hit deadlines. But that particular time, I knew it was physically impossible mm-hmm. for me to turn around 13 sets of minutes because all of the committee meetings had, had taken place mm-hmm. and I needed to produce um, the, as you say, the LGB minutes for the, um, for the, for the board, for the trust board. And nobody considers this when they're when they're timetabling meetings. Mm-hmm. And so after that experience, what the head said to me after I said to them, "Look, I'm not going to hit the seven day deadline. It's seven days, including a weekend, so five school days." I said, "There's just yeah. no way, mm-hmm. right? All mm-hmm. of your meetings have happened. You will get your minutes, but then they're going to be late." I didn't yeah. even say, "Can I have more time?" No, I this is statement. This, this is what's going to happen. Statement of fact. Yeah. This is what's yeah. going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and they all. They all responded and said, Sharon, the world will not stop turning. It, I think it's the communication that very much Absolutely. helps. But it also Absolutely. shows the relationship of the school, the academy, the head, the chair, for them yeah. to respect that rather than demand and say, why are they going to be late? Why can't you? Or maybe yeah. we should start, start looking for someone else. They respected you as a professional saying, yeah. you know, you're overwhelmed. You've communicated yes. that. You said you you said you're going to get it done. It just means uh, the timescales will be different. And it's like, okay, we understand. Thank you for letting us know. And we trust that you'll. And in the, it's yeah. based on your performance. It, it will be fine. It will work out Absolutely. when it should. Uh, and in the midst of that, as well as the standard scheduled meetings, I remember I had a staff um, complaints committee, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there was also an exclusion. And those take priority over everything. 
Mm-hmm. because that because the time scale of those you've got mm-hmm. to you've got to turn turn those around because of appeals and all that kind of stuff so so my, the point I'm making and the plea that I'm making to governors and trustees recognize and acknowledge your clerk mm-hmm. we work really hard I know it may seem as if we turn up with our computers or with our notepads and we and we sit and we you know we we take the the minutes and and that may be all you see that we do but trust me there is so much more going on behind the scenes so before we circle back to the exclusion panels um webinar that really kind of charged this dialogue I think that we take a little short break just to kind of hear from our sponsors, the Governor Hub, and then we'll come back and continue this conversation. Governor Hub is proud to support the Governor's Podcast. As a leading provider of online governance support, we know that confident and well-equipped governors bring about positive and meaningful change. So when you've been inspired to do your best by really leaning in on the topics that matter, you can rely on us for the tools to help your board work better, the guidance and training to develop your skills, and a secure online body of evidence for when it matters most. Visit thehoot.news to join us and feel part of something bigger. So for Clarks, this time of the year um, is the biggest movement. I've been inundated with requests to find Clarks for schools. Um, they are leaving the profession um, in, in big numbers, actually. Do you think um, it's because of this overwhelm, not being seen, not being heard? or It's, is a, number, it a, it's a number of things. It's a number of things. Um, some just, you know, it's time to, it's time to go. They've got... Mm-hmm. Um, other things that they want to do mm-hmm. some um it is that they're exhausted and fed up of being um overworked um but one of the main things on pay pay yeah if you don't know and i'm not saying that in the middle of a meeting you blurt out so how much are we paying the clerk yeah you know um but i think it is a question that govern especially when you see the the budget yes if you cut, I try and identify, I challenge you, especially, I mean, you know, um, at Matt's, it may be, may be that the budget's already set because I know the deadlines are um, at the end of this month. Um, but, you know, look back through your papers and see if you can see how much your clerk is being paid. And then look at the work that your clerk is doing. You always get your papers. Yes. And if they're late, can I just say, it is not the clerk who makes papers late. Yeah. Um, you know, you get your papers, um, you ask a question that you're not sure of, uh, or you turn to the clerk and ask um, mm-hmm. for guidance. Um, you know, you, you um, they are always there at meetings, even I've, if no, nobody else is. I was um, going to say good clerks are really responsive um absolutely I, I just in terms of that second point you said about um if you have any questions even down to um the clerk that we now have at our um school um they've taken on the responsibility of coordinating the subject link governor meeting so um you you wouldn't think that which that is, would which, be something that they exactly. falls onto yeah. their remit but absolutely i think she's just come in and says look this is a this is one of the ways that i can develop a relationship with my governors if it takes the pressure off them because i think that's how good clerks see themselves they don't want to mm. have to add any more pressure of pressure add any more pressure onto governors who are volunteers because yeah. something you've said previously is the clerk is the only position that's paid for like yeah. all, all the other people around that table are volunteers independent for the most part depending on the setting you're in of course and so when you then come in and you know it's like okay we'll co- I'll coordinate with the school for you mm-hmm. what times and dates are you are available and I'll get back to you and confirm mm-hmm. Rather than feeling like the governors need to speak directly to subject leaders or whoever they're meeting with in school. But I don't, I didn't think that that was a part of the clerk's role, which it probably isn't. But clerks do more do than they're more than, than, yeah, than what they're contracted for mm-hmm. or paid for. 
Um, you know, I, I've spent, I've already delivered um, one session. I'm doing another session um, this, this week um, in raising the profile of clerks yes. in, in their own minds, because some clerks do feel they don't have the confidence yeah. to speak up, to be heard. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is a, is a, is a, is a problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I know I sound like a stuck record, but I'm, I'm unapologetic about this. And I could but say that I'm okay, Jack, so it's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've just resigned from two of my schools purely because of workload. Um, but, and, and they've already got a new clerk in place. Mm -hmm. But what I am doing, and I don't have to do this, but mm -hmm. what I am doing as part of the transition is meeting individually with each of the governors from both schools mm -hmm. to just check that their compliance is up to date, their business interests and everything to make September smoother. Because that's what I would be doing anyway. But it also yeah. allows me to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. It also allows me rather than just round the table. Oh, oh I'm going. Leaving. This, is, this yeah. is Sharon's last meeting kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It also allows me to um, almost draw out from them. Mm -hmm. Like one um, one particular governor, I was talking. I met with on on um, one day one day this week, and they've been on the governing board for just over twelve months. Mm -hmm. And so um, she was able to ask me questions that she didn't necessarily feel comfortable around the table. Like okay, what's the, like what's the learning walk? And, <laughs> you know, and and what 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 should I be doing? You know, yeah, she's yeah. got these like subject link responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you don't have that educational background, if you haven't been around it, then you don't know, and sometimes you don't feel comfortable. And that's the role that clerks play. Yeah, we will be the confidant and the sounding board, the gap filler. For every, <laughs> for everybody, yeah. on that. you'd be amazed how many governors. It's not even just governors. Speak in a meeting. Yeah, even, heads, even senior, senior leaders, leaders that lean absolutely, on the clock. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that is, you know, it's so important. So all we expect, there are two things a clerk wants, and that's it. Be paid well for what they do. And recognition. And just say thank you from yeah. time to time. Mm -hmm. That's it. We mm -hmm. will we will go over and above. Yeah to do to, to to support our schools we mm -hmm. will do that and we just ask in return that you pay us on time and you pay us well and that you say thank you occasionally I would say some of this feels like it links to the culture of the school and the culture of the governing body at that school or academy in terms mm -hmm. of the treatment of the clerk um, I'd say there's, it's, a, it's something to look at to take an audit of like mm -hmm. if you really um, value the work that is done the value that is added because as you said earlier without the clerk things will fall apart I've experienced that as a governor when you don't have a stable clerk mm -hmm. like you things just don't run as smoothly you'll be at a meeting and it's like oh there's no clerk here you know because we've got a different person to the last time because we don't have a fixed clerk assigned to our school. And it just throws, and then the, you got the head, it throws people off because you got the head mm -hmm. teacher and the deputy thinking, so does one of us need to take minutes? Do you have a laptop? Do you the coordination of everything. The, it's just no change, longer seamless. It changes everything. It changes if, everything. If you feel it when they're not there, then recognize when we're there. Them, there we go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That is the message. <laughs> that is the message. If you know you're going to feel it when they're not there, that means their present it, presence is needed. Yeah, and and yeah. it deserves, it de deserves um, recognition. recognition. It does. Absolutely. It does. Wow. Like, honestly, I, I always try and um, engage with the clerk as much as I can prior to meetings, post meetings, you know, even via email, you know, if they... um if they email all of us and they say, this is an update, da, da, da. I try and say, thank you. I, I mm. literally, I, even as, just as an individual, I don't know if it's just because of the way I am. I'm someone who expresses a lot of gratitude. I try and do it irrespective of what other governors are doing, because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's because of your influence, 
because I've mm-hmm. seen the other side. You will recognize Clark. You, know, you will <laughs> recognize Clark. You know, I think it could be a subconscious thing just based on circle of influence because I know you um, have done a lot of clerking work. And so I see the other side. I see the long list of um, meet, uh, minutes that you've got to write or, you know, the requests and, you know, all the emails personally getting to know each governor just so that you understand who's around the table a lot better. But, you know, I I champion, I champion clerks because I know I am not built for it. <laughs> you know, when you just like, you know what? I I rate you. I respect you because you're doing something that I I literally it's couldn't. Like, yeah, it's like I couldn't do teaching. I couldn't do teaching. <laughs> there you I've, go. Got a le- I've got a level of respect for teachers. Exactly. That is off the chart because... I could not do it. And it's I, not even about the subject matter. It's being no, in the it's classroom the, it's day the in, day out and working <laughs> with young people. So, yeah. you know, you've got, you've got to have it in you to do it. Yeah. Uh, um, um, and so, therefore, people just want to be thanked, as you say, want, and it to come from a genuine place. They, Genuinely, I, yeah, yeah. Not just, not um, just to say it again, passively. No, That's why I say I added that bit to be genuine about um, it. Uh, yeah, like, I sorry. see you. I see you. And I'm grateful for you being here. I remember being in one um, board meeting. It was a trust board. And the chair thanked me. And she says, minute that, Sharon, because I know you won't. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and I think that was, that was um, the first year I was with that. I was with that trust. Um, you know because I think she'd noticed that previously she'd she'd thanked me and I didn't minute it but I'd, it's I'd the just fact say that, that yeah yeah it's the fact that they read the minutes to re- to notice what was not it's there not there yeah yeah she really That's did and, and and it reminded me um I'm, and I'm going down memory lane here but it reminded mm-hmm. me of when um I was PA to the chief executive back in the 90s of an organization in in Birmingham and I sort of hid in the shadows whilst he had a ministerial visit mm-hmm. and he was he was looking around for me um and so when I went up to him to see what he needed whether it you know he needed me to do something he introduced me to the minister <laughs> and then and then and I was like wow I think I was only 23 or 24 at the time okay. and when we got back to the office he said to me, he sat me down and he said, Sharon, don't you ever hide in the shadows for anybody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you are you deserve, valued. To, you, and deserve you deserve to be and, there. Yeah. You know, just like everybody, all the other VIPs were being introduced to mm-hmm. the minister. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, I wanted to, to introduce you. And that, I think that changed my mindset about mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. as well. So mm-hmm. fortunately, I had somebody who could show me that a long time ago. So now yeah. you're now doing like, that for other people. I dare you not to say thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because of something that you've, you've learned yourself and implemented in your own way of working. You're now doing that for other people. And I think that's partially why um, NAS, the National Association of um, School and College Clerks was so important for you to build um, mm. a place for clerks to feel seen heard and safe and feel like they mm. can get the support that they deserve in order to continue to do the work that they clearly either have a passion yeah. for or are invested in um, and are doing and so being that driving force behind it so having the one-to-ones and you know doing the master classes yeah. and really understanding what the clerk needs because mm. it's like the uh, NASC has become the voice to the voiceless or the mm. voice of the few that is serving the many. Many, and, yeah. And, and that's what is so amazing. So, yeah. so amazing. Absolutely. And, you know, one clerk could be, you know, um, supporting literally hundreds of, yes. of governors yeah. and, 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 and senior leaders. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, the coordination of it, knowing exactly. which when you get an email from um this governor knowing what the idiosyncrasies are you know for them um yes. you know it's like it's like i i had a um a conversation recently with with somebody who had been absent for um a number of meetings this year but not three on the bounce yeah which is 
which is what is required within our, our memo and arts for there to be a termination. Right. And, okay. um, and I knew it was work pressure. Yeah. And, and so I messaged them. I just um, dropped a text message to them and said, you know, can we have a quick chat um, about, about your, your um, role? And um, the response came back immediately. Yes, please. Yeah. And I just said to them, I said, let's, um, let's get you resigned rather than me having to write a letter to terminate you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she went, Sharon, thank you. She says, I've been meaning, you know, she says, I keep meaning every month to, yeah, to say you something. Know, to, to either say something or it is my intention to attend, but something I'm building my business. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got to focus on, 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 on that. And, mm-hmm. and so I really want to do it, but it's just at the moment. And I was like, I get it. You just don't and have that, the capacity. And again, that's what, that's what we as carts can do. We can look at the picture yeah. and know the individual. Yeah. So rather than looking at the statistics mm-hmm. um, on a piece of paper that says absent, absent, apologies. It's just absent. cold. Yeah. Right. We can look at the person yes. and recognize what is happening. Not that governors or governing boards don't do that. Yeah. But we can we can take action in a, in a heartbeat mm-hmm. that can help both situations. Of course. Mm-hmm. And we can do that so that it's so that it's um, it's um, um, palatable for mm-hmm. both. So it's not a termination and it's and it's not a constant um, um, of giving up apologies. And, yeah, and that's and that's what we do all the time. Exactly, and it and it helps to help with the flow of the because obviously if there's someone who's they could be occupying a place. Uh, this because I can't think of an, uh, a better word than occupy occupying a place that they they cannot fulfill right now because of their mm-hmm. capacity. And it means I think you have another example of where you suggested that someone takes a year away. Um, yeah. so then that becomes a vacancy for someone else to come in if um, who has time and then if there's a vacancy at the later date there's nothing stopping from someone coming back you know reapplying absolutely, absolutely. you know you know I've, I've had so many conversations with um, governors one recently you know got promoted to deputy head so knows that there's going to be a significant increase in responsibilities but still wants to stay on the on on the board and so appreciated the the fact that I'd picked up the phone and said okay what do you want to do let's have a conversation Mm -hmm. what's the reality about this new role do you think if we tweak the start times of the meetings Mm -hmm. so that they are you know the meetings have gone from morning Mm -hmm. to early after late afternoon to Mm -hmm. now early evening to make sure that they can stay on the trust board because they really want to do it. And plus mm-hmm. he's the only male there. And I, was, <laughs> I promised him that I'd find some other men for it. <laughs> so he wasn't alone. But it's those, those are the kind of things that we, yes. that we do. And we do those things without even thinking about them in terms yeah. of, you know, it's no biggie. We see it as part and parcel of our role. And yes, not every clerk does all of what you may require. Yes, um, of course. Don't and you know, I don't want anyone don't, listening yeah, to this yeah. thinking, okay, now I've got a long list of what my clock yeah, needs to be doing. No, no, because no. what what you would have slipped or allowed to slip by you is that if you're really going to make these demands and list of responsibilities, you better hope that that money is ready yeah. to pay them so that they <laughs> can fulfill them. all of those responsibilities as you desire. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And just as we're talking about money and we'll, and we'll um, end it on here, because, you know, I've got this big thing around clerks being paid their worth. So is this pre Here's, your takeaway? Pre your yeah, takeaway. this yeah. is this. Yeah, pre my takeaway. This okay. is um, the way in which I explain it. The average primary school has a one point one million pound budget. Mm-hmm. The average secondary school has a five, five point nine, four point nine, something like that million pound budget. Give or take, high or lower, depending on the numbers um, of students. Three to five grand for your clerk mm-hmm. is not a hardship. Mm-hmm. I really don't care how tight the budget is. Mm-hmm. Three to five grand for a professional service, mm-hmm. professional advice and mm-hmm. support mm-hmm. of you, your governing board as a whole, mm-hmm. and your governors and trustees individually. Mm-hmm. That's not a lot of money. Nope. 
So let's enter the new year looking differently at your clerks, recognizing your clerks and having a real review of their remuneration. Yes, I second that. That would be, that would be my takeaway or my final word. <laughs> I second that <laughs> for real, for real, like for real, for real, for real, for real. <laughs> so then what? So that's your takeaway. So that's it. That, but but you, no, no, my, my, I suppose. Yes. Um, it's been a, it's been a good year. Mm-hmm. It's been um, the feedback we've had from um, listeners. Of course. Um, yes. It's absolutely amazing. Sometimes because we're, we talk, we'll just talk to each yes, other. We'll, we'll go we on will. a meeting and just, and just talk for, you know, for talking sake. Yeah. Um, so to, to know that there is a growing number of people out there who are listening to us and um, finding value. Yeah. And they're like engaged listeners to the point where we're hearing about people who have discovered our podcast from someone else. Like, so else, there, yeah. there are people who are talking about it to other people and it's it's reaching it's it's actually quite humbling I think this Mm -hmm. is probably a bit of my takeaway but rather than just the episode specifically just the entire season and since February 21 which is when we released our first episode and just knowing that we're like a year and a half on and I'm just so grateful for the people who continuously tune in we have people tell us that you know, it's their Saturday morning thing or they're refreshing their page, their streaming platform every Wednesday because that's when the episodes go out. So then when a Wednesday comes and goes and we know that no episode has gone out, we're thinking, oh, that person in one part of the UK who didn't get it's way, it's actually he's, <laughs> we he's actually trying to download and it's not coming. Yeah, yeah, we do feel sorry. But honestly, we are so grateful that people reach out to us. So whether they see us at one of our training events and they, they're in the chat, say, say we mentioned the podcast um, just as part of our training and then they would put a message in the chat saying, love the podcast. I'm listening to this episode. Like that's the episode I'm on or I'm definitely tuning in or people who email us um, mm. from all over who are telling us that they've discovered it somewhere, somehow. And just knowing that um, I think we're approaching 8.3 or 8.4 thousand downloads across our podcast, which, which currently has 28 episodes. This will be episode 29. And it's just like, wow, thank you. Because, you know, honestly, when we started, we thought we just want to be able to reach more people. Those, mm. those who don't feel like they know what they're doing in the space, especially if they're new, but then those who are experienced and thinking, is there anything that I should be thinking about, you know, and we just wanted to make it real and relatable. And so knowing that people have um, found a lot of value in these discussions um, across the different topics, it, it kind of just reaffirms that what we're Mm. doing is the right thing um, Mm. just to kind of connect with people. Because when you think about it, when we're recording, it's a silent audience. We don't know who's going to listen to it. We don't know when, but we're just trusting that a message will hit. Yes. It, will, it will land. And so we just want to take the time to say thank you so much. This is the end of season two. We will be back in September. We will back, be back in the new academic year. If the first episode doesn't come out in September, maybe October, because we all know that when you start a new academic year, there's a lot going on. We it's are crazy. We are <laughs> head of governance. I'm a governor myself um, and the chair of the committee. And then obviously you have other things that you've got other projects Mm. that you're working on and we're doing a lot more diversity training we're getting a lot more requests in that area so there's just a lot going on but we are definitely dedicated to this podcast especially because it's being received so well so that would probably be my takeaway a feed forward to say thank you to all who have journeyed with us thus far and those who we pick up along the way thank you you're welcome thank you Thank you for doing this podcast with me because I'm the one with all the crazy ideas and here you are just jumping on with me. Following your crazy idea. (laughs) Yeah. And it's worked out. It's worked out. And it's only going to get better and stronger and all that good stuff. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Please rate, review and subscribe via your preferred streaming platform. 
The Governor's Podcast is a brand of the legal entity Education Governance Solutions Limited and a free training resource for anyone. So if you know someone who is interested in becoming a governor or a trustee, please share this podcast with them. And if you'd like to get in touch with us directly with questions or comments, then drop us an email at thegovernorspodcast at gmail.com. You can also follow us on social media platforms at The Governor's Podcast. Let's connect.